Welcome to part 4 of the Yanzhou campaign. Last time we defeated the garrison of the city of Chao by forcing them to come out into the field, capturing a major territory from Cao Cao, but then we were forced to go to war with Liu Bei. Our first decisive battle ended up being an auto resolve due to some glitches, but we went on to fight another battle at about the same point and defeat their invading army, and now we're going right for a counterattack because I saw a chance to draw the garrison of Xiao Pei out into the field. The enemy army is split into four groups, three small ones and a big one coming from Xiao Pei itself. The first group which deployed in front of us was just a couple of units of archers, so I started the battle by sending all of my calf to just attack them right away. We can push them off the field without much ado, while my army starts marching towards the northeast where the other two smaller groups are slowly entering the battle. Here we are a while later, finally took out the archers, it did take longer than expected, since I wasn't actually cycle charging them, I just let my men slowly grind through them. That did the job in the end. The main army coming from the south is going to take a while to get to us, so my plan is to take out the two smaller groups first, since they'll be nice and easy, and then hopefully have enough time to form up ready to fight a normal battle with their main army afterwards. The group coming from the east is one unit of swords and a unit of halberds. The swords were easy to take out, using a tactic that I saw the enemy using, just straight up cavalry charge them, it seems swords are particularly vulnerable to this. We defeat almost the entire unit immediately, they died much faster than the archers, maybe because we were charging downhill a little bit, and that was that. Their halberds were running onto the flank of my army, so all I need to do is turn off one unit to block them, and then my cav can come back from fighting the swords to rear attack those halberds, and again, an easy victory. They rout and they will get taken out. Looks like we've still got plenty of time before the main force arrives, so we continue pressing on towards the northeast, where there was a unit of spears and a unit of cavalry. The light cav started coming towards my heavy cav, so I thought, fine, we'll just have a fight over there because we should win throw some spears out there to help if they arrive before the fight's over, and our archers and sword troops will go after the enemy halberds. That fight with the cav actually only lasts like two seconds, so our spears don't have to do anything, and the nearby troops will quickly rout as well. So we have managed to defeat three of the four armies in quick succession, and we do still have plenty of time to form up before the main fight, so that all went just as intended. Once I finally am formed up, I decided to advance into this battle rather than allowing a skirmish phase to take place because this army that we're facing has quite a lot of archers in it. Looks like I'm falling prey here to a classic problem with Medieval 2. In the later Total War games, any movement order you give is assumed to be a running order so your men will run to the new position, but in the older titles they walk there by default, so there I was just walking along getting shot by arrows the whole time until I realised I needed to press the run button. Anyway, the battle strategy is nothing too special, we engage the enemy's infantry along a line and then get my calf to go and attack all of those archers at the back. The enemy did send some calf to attack my archers as well, but not enough to overcome my reserves. We take out an enemy officer, Mi Fang, somewhere in the mix, and then on our left we defeat a more important officer, Liu Feng, who is Liu Bei's adopted son, meaning that's effectively one of the enemy princes. Very nice to take those out. Those archers aren't having a very good time against my cav, if they're not routing, they're trying to skirmish away and being attacked. The main grind was a little bit deadly for our troops because we were facing troops of equal quality and we did lose a fair few men, but eventually everything's routing and we do need to chase things down since our objective here is to kill the entire reinforcement army from the garrison to see if we can steal the city after this. Once I was satisfied that I'd killed enough to force the enemy armies to despawn, I end the battle. There's the result. About 500 losses, the enemy lost about 2,000 though. The thing was, our losses were concentrated heavily among our spearmen, and it looks like our spear line actually isn't going to be very useful after this fight. We are going to need to reinforce or start retraining units to go on to any more major battles. Anyway, afterwards I needed to execute several hundred prisoners so they didn't just come right back at us. There's also the risk that they would just go right into the city if I released them, so that would defeat the purpose of this whole battle. All of the armies outside the enemy walls go down, but the army inside has survived. It seems an officer escaped from the battle, which I presume 
dramatically increases the survivability of the remaining troops and stops the stack being just stack wiped or despawned. So now we have to besiege 30 or so guys inside the town before we can make any more progress and this will give the Liu clan a chance to react of course. First we'll take a look at what the Sao clan are up to and they're not up to anything particularly threatening. They're not posting armies on our border anymore, so while the war continues, looks like they're focusing on something else, in particular moving a big army to the north towards the crossing into Yuan Shao's territory. Now for the Liu clan's turn. A big army approaches Lu Jun, suggesting that maybe they do intend to besiege it, as I had previously feared. Forces move to reinforce Xiao Pei, but no sally is attempted right now. I noticed that their border town of Jianchun is relatively unguarded and I thought I could cheekily lay siege to it with a small strike team led by Zhang Liao, but while they could get up to the walls I couldn't lay siege, I needed one more tile of movement, and now they're in danger because Huang Zhong, a captain, could lead an army to counterattack them, therefore I ended up moving quite a lot of the garrison of Chao over to support Zhang Liao, couldn't move anymore because of public order concerns, but I gave him a good half stack. Then I noticed that there's a big army from the dark green faction, Qing Zhou, on our northern border. This is highly suspicious, of course, and what's more, it may be effective for the enemy to invade from this direction, since our nearby town is of low quality, I can't really defend it. I was so paranoid that I was about to be attacked that I decided to move my nearby officer out of the town to avoid him dying if an attack was to take place, dropping down a watchtower as we escape in case we lose the nearby territory so we can still have line of sight. Made a quick offer of peace to the Sao clan, and it was rejected. It was fully rejected this time, rather than barely rejected, which it was in the past. So the Sao clan are more and more inclined to keep the war going. That's a shame. But we can still ignore them for this turn, at least. We'll keep focusing on the Liu clan. I needed more troops to put in Lu Jun to defend against a potential attack, but all of my reserves at Shenyang are half dead after all the battles against the Liu clan, so I couldn't really do much, but I could recruit new guys in Lu Jun since I just happened to have completed the infantry recruitment building there. Now moving south to Xiao Pei, I needed to make an attack against the small group of men inside, but since the enemy have brought armies up to stand around the area, there are going to be some reinforcements. I noticed that Zhang Ba only has one command star against the enemy. I think your command level varies based on the type of battle, so he's just terrible at sieges while he's okay at field battles. Luckily, the enemy command is terrible as well. Since it would have taken ages to actually do that fight while also being very easy, I decided to auto resolve it and we got an okay result. We'll march on in and now occupy our new frontier position, which is pretty nice. Xiao Pei has stone walls that we can use to defend against Liu Bei's attacks, whereas Shanyang, our old border town, doesn't, so we've definitely moved up in the world. Time to move on to the next turn. The Sao clan are now acting more threateningly, various armies gathering near Chen Liu, and their big army comes over as well, marching right into our territory. Seems this time they're actually planning to do something and we need to start preparing. That's a shame, because we don't have that many men around the place, with Liu Bei occupying us so heavily. They also send a big army into our territory. It looked like it was trying to get towards where the Sao army was, but it stopped at Shenyang after entering our zone of control. With Qingzhou, it looked like their army was moving away, but only to be replaced by an even bigger army <laughs> with a high-level commander, so that's still a highly suspicious situation up there in the north. Now for Zhang Liao's little strike team, I need to run away, essentially. The fact I couldn't get the siege going on the first turn meant that now we're out of time. Another turn of sieging will just draw us into a battle in that area, and Zhang Liao needs to move these men back to potentially help defend against an offensive from Cao Cao. On the topic of defence, we need to set our towns up for a potential siege. First, Zhui Yang looks like it's going to be the target of the Cao offensive. We've also got Shang Yang, which could become the target of Liu Bei's attacks. One thing we can do is grab mercenaries from outside to get some low quality troops in there. With Xiang Yang in particular, I can move troops from Puyang, our capital, to reinforce, where I've been recruiting various things, meaning we end up with a sizable army now inside the walls. I'm trying to move out the units that are basically dead, having seen combat earlier on, so we can retrain them elsewhere. Now there are lots of Sao armies still yet to be deployed, 
but I decided not to bother keeping a reserve at Ji Ying, which I had been doing. I moved all the units that were there to Shangyang, so now we've got a formidable defence against any sieges that Liu Bei wants to set up in that area. As for Lu Jun, since it looks like it's not going to be set to siege, I thought we might as well move out somewhere. The army here isn't very good, but it should be enough to jump over here to the east and attack Lang Ya, because there are only a couple of units inside and a couple more outside. If the enemy don't give us much attention, we can sneakily take that town. With all those moves done, it was time to see what the enemy had in store for us. The Sao clan pull a bit of a switcheroo. First, they start fighting rebels, which is always nice. The rebels have been quite good to us, distracting the Sao clan. And then their main force just walks off, doing a massive move. I think they have a general that gives them tons of extra movement points. And now he's over there, so it looks like a siege wasn't on the cards after all. Not quite sure what they're doing. They've been moving that army around, not doing anything with it for a while. The Liu clan don't really do anything either. We see a few moves and nothing from their big army in our territory, so that's great. Nothing from Qingzhou either, so that's even better. Now then, it's time for us to attack Liu Bei, since we've started to regain some initiative. First, I can take most of the army at Xiaopei and move south to attack Pengcheng, where they had just one guy inside one officer defending, so that should be an easy attack if nothing else comes to reinforce. Our spy reveals that the Liu clan doesn't have much up here in the top right of their domain, so we may be able to conquer both of these two towns. We're going to start with Lang Ya. The enemy did move one unit to stand next to the town for this assault, so we have to face them, but overall this is looking pretty good. They've got three units inside, nothing special. The one outside is a squad of heavy swordsmen who outclass everything that we have, so just need to be careful with them. My plan was to attack them using my horse archers, since they can whittle the enemy down and not risk fighting those high melee skill units. Doesn't do that much damage, archery attacks that is, since they are heavy, but gradually we'll be able to kill them. They've got to run all the way across the map to get to the town, which is what the AI wants them to do. My regular cav are hanging around, <laughs> waiting for a chance to charge, or perhaps attack the enemy if they rout. Meanwhile, the rest of the army are setting up for an attack on the west side of the town. There's a few peasants guarding the wall, and they've got two units of archers in the middle, one regular and their general. Here we are a bit later. We've killed quite a lot of those heavy infantry, but they're still not routing. They're really taking their time about it. I didn't manage to kill very many of the peasants just inside the wall because they spread out and the wall was protecting them somewhat from my archery. I'm going to reposition there to try and sort that out. The heavy swordsmen eventually started charging after my general rather than going for the town. I decided to counter charge, thinking we might be able to kill enough of them with a charge to rout them since they're nearly all dead anyway. We do kill a load, but still not quite enough, even down to just minimal strength. They still want to fight, they've got the morale, so we have to run away and go back to archery since we don't want to stay in melee with those quality units. Meanwhile, we're now making some progress against those peasant conscripts, shooting into their flank with no wall in the way this time, that looks nice. But we're not making very much progress when it comes to opening the gate. This ram's been sitting here for a while, and I realise at this point they've actually glitched out. They're not ramming the gate, so we're going to have to get them to withdraw the ram, put it down, pick it back up again, and try again, which will take a while. At least we took out the commander of that sword unit. The survivors are routing into the town, and this gives me the opportunity here to sneak in through the north gate, since it was open to let the survivors in. And with that, we capture the north gate, and now our cav can get inside. Not that that's terribly useful right now. I sent our general, Hao Meng, to go to the east side of the town, from where I could charge towards the victory point and potentially attack their archers. My light cav, getting shot by the enemy's archers, are going to come around to the west to charge into the peasant conscripts. And now we go for a second round of attacks on the gates. Maybe these yellow turban troops I've got here will work it out this time. I had hoped that my light cav would break these conscripts by attacking them, and then we'd just kill them as they ran back towards the centre, but no, it did not happen, and now the light cav are fighting a losing battle. At least my heavy cav can go after the enemy's archers in the centre there. I thought here I was ordering my horse archers to horse arch against the enemy's general archers, but the horse archers are out of ammo, so that was actually a melee order I gave them. 
quickly realized and told them to go back out of the town. While my heavy cav charge against the enemy's archers didn't look very good, the enemy had victory as a distinct possibility as their combat rating, so I gave up on that and just ran for it. This general cavalry attack hasn't achieved anything overall, all three of our units have utterly failed, but at least the infantry can now start coming in through the west gate. We were getting hammered by the enemy's archers as we did this. The enemy's regular archers were locked down in melee by my yellow turbans, so that's all good, although they were still able to fire while in melee, curiously. Their general's units also sniping us from across the town. They were firing at my archers, and they were able to kill over a hundred of my archers at this point. It was getting really bad, so I ended up sending most of my cav to try and just pile into those heavy archers to take the heat off of my own archers. Meanwhile, I've got some light cav who've snuck through the enemy's light archers to be behind them, and now we're attacking them from all sides, hoping to just grind them away and make them rout. The enemy's heavy archers get hit, they're not going to die very easily, they're too heavy to go down to cavalry just in a static melee, so that's going to be a fight that goes on for a very long time. During that time we defeated the enemy's archers and generally captured the town. We can hit the heavy archers from the side with more cav, but as I said, it's very slow work getting through those guys. Luckily we don't need to kill them all, since they're not on the victory point, they can be routed and eventually they do rout and all get taken out. The peasant conscripts are taken out by just attacking them in melee, and eventually we've secured our win. So that actually was harder than I thought it was going to be, I thought this battle would be a walkover, actually became something a bit technical and we did take some losses, but we also took the town. We had three captives from the Heavy Swordsman, and Liu Bei decides to pay to get them back, so hopefully those three will appreciate that. And there we have it, we've cut off the enemy's top right corner and taken a new town. I thought they might be feeling the pressure now and accept a ceasefire, but no, they also reject it just like the Sao clan, so neither war seems likely to end soon, and that sucks because if we were fighting just one of them, I think we'd be fine. Time to move on and see what they throw at us this time. The Sao clan pull off the most audacious attack yet. They send one general on his own to move towards Ji Ying. Weren't uh, quite able to start the siege by the looks of things, and so now he's just standing outside. The main force that we know of is still just hanging around in the bottom left of their territory. As for the Liu clan, their main force goes back home, even moving to the far right of their territory where surely they have nothing to do. Not quite sure what's up with the AI's attacking plan here, but it's not been very effective. Qing Zhou, who had moved an army right up to my capital's walls, then go home again. Still not sure what's up with their we're at war with you but not really style manoeuvres. Hopefully nothing will ever spill over there because we need to not be at war with them. We learn that the first faction has been destroyed, it's East Wu, I think that's the faction that the Sun clan to the south has to fight to, to secure their home territory, so apparently they have been successful. Now let's look at the situation. The siege at Xiao Pei seems destined for victory because the enemy didn't really reinforce the area. Our army inside Yang doesn't need to be there anymore because the risk of it being besieged by a major army seems to have dissipated. What I thought I'd do is move to the north to take out Xu Huang here and reinforce Ji Ying, but all we could do is walk up to him, couldn't initiate the battle, which was slightly annoying. We'll leave our army in Chao to act as a reserve, still needs to be there for public order reasons as well, I believe. The garrison at Ji Ying moves out to try and initiate battle with Xu Huang. He retreats through our men annoyingly, and then we eventually get the battle going. It's an auto-resolve situation, but I am going to fight it manually because I predicted that auto-resolve would just say, well, he routed and escaped. But if we fight it manually, we can make sure he actually dies so we never fight this guy again, which we definitely want since he is a very high level general. At first he just marches towards us, we hit him with our heavy archers under Jiang Miao, the lolling guy on the unit card down there. Once he gets close he can just charge our light infantry. Luckily his charge was mostly focused on our Shiltern Formation County Militia, so they kind of repel the charge and don't just get overrun, unlike the peasant conscripts who get attacked by four or five guys on the edge of the enemy unit and lose 50 men instantly. That didn't go very well. At least now that he's here we can surround him and just try and grind him down with all of our anti-cavalry units going at it. As I come in to surround him with my heavy cav, some of our spearmen actually bring the main man down and that's going to bring an end to the battle. 
could just end the battle here, but there is a reason to continue it after this point. The first reason is I wanted to pull off the rear attack that I planned, <laughs> there it is. The second reason is if we capture members of the general's bodyguard, we can ransom them back to the Sao clan and get some free money, and then the units just despawn because their commander's dead. So we just stole some money from the Sao clan through that maneuver, effectively. Now Ji Ying needs to be garrisoned by something, so some light cavalry don't rush over and occupy the city. There we go, now we're safe, and we'll have to wait until next turn before we do anything with the Saos again. On the Liu front, just need to finish off this siege at Pengcheng. Sun Qian on the inside probably can't stop us, so we'll go in for an auto-resolve of that easy attack. There we have it, that's going to be another large town captured. We're also now just one step away from Xia Pi, Liu Bei's capital, where Liu Bei himself is actually garrisoned right now. The army moved on right out of the town because I wanted to attack the small enemy group that was nearby. They retreated as you might expect. Now going after them is a bit annoying because it will take me too far away from the town to go right back. But then again, that's not too much of an issue, as long as there's something in the town so it can't be retaken. We don't really need to defend it, there's no major threat, obviously, on the way there. So after redistributing units around the place, I go in for this little fight. Not going to be too much to this, just two units of archers, or one of archers and one of crossbows, some swords and some light cav. I had the skirmishing advantage, but in practice, I didn't, because the enemy were on a small hill, and in the older games, this increases the range of ranged attacks. Not sure if it does in the newer games, actually, I don't remember it doing so. But anyway, it meant that I couldn't get the first volleys and had to advance into enemy fire to start shooting. This caused me quite a few casualties, but the enemy weren't too interested in skirmishing anyway, as it turns out. Once they got close, they came down the hill to attack me. From there, victory will be guaranteed, because my cav can attack the enemy's archers. Their light cav got stuck between a rock and a hard place, or more specifically my heavy cav and my spears, so they got taken out, and their swords charged down into the rest of my army, including my archers in melee, and just generally routed because they couldn't go through them all, leading to a victory. In this case, I wasn't able to chase down enough and kill enough of the enemies to get the magical 85% by the end of things, so we actually didn't completely destroy that force. I'm going to execute the prisoners I did take to get us closer to destroying it, but we saw just for a couple of frames there, some guys teleported back to Xiaopi. Anyway, that will be all for now. We'll continue... Uh. Anyway, that will be all for now. We'll pick things back up on both of our deadly war fronts in the next part.